Welcome everybody to this fourth tutorial on XPath. In this tutorial, we will learn how to create various XPath access and how to use it in your application. In case you have missed my previous tutorial on XPath functions, I'm giving the link in the description below. So do go through that as well. So without wasting any time, let us get started. So guys, like all of our previous sessions, we are not going to go into the definition and the theory of what an XPath access is. Instead, we look into the code and try to understand this ourselves. So to start with, you can either open up your Firefox or your Chrome browser and navigate to this website. The link I will be giving in the description below. So you scroll all the way down till this particular element over here called has XPath access inspect me. So you can press F12 and inspect that particular element. Now what I've done here is I've gone ahead and created a whole complicated list of web elements such that it is very complicated and um, that will help you understand the benefits of your XPath access. So this particular element over here consists of a div with the ID A. Now inside of your ID A, you basically have got uh, one, two, three, four, four children and they all have the ID called as B1, B2, B3 and B4. If you open up the very first one, it also has got three children. Your second element here has got three children as well. And the third has got two children. Your fourth div does not have any children at all. Now, if you come on top to the children of B1, you would see that your X1 and X2 are basically alone. But your X2 here has got children of its own. As you can see, it has got O1. And inside of it, you have got Q1 and then R1. Now I know that this is getting pretty hard for you to understand. So I've gone ahead and taken this and represented this in a graphical format in your PowerPoint presentation. So here we go. This is exactly the same thing that you had seen in your HTML where you have an element with the ID A and that basically has got four children, which is B1, B2, B3 and B4. So guys, this is pretty much the exact same thing. And with the help of this diagram and our HTML right here, we will right now perform a few XPath access and better understand the benefits of it as well. Let us learn our first access for today, which is your parent access. And as the name suggests, it basically means your one level up. So guys, if you're currently working on the web element with the ID Y2 and if you give parent, it will take you one level up and now it'll point to B2. Let us look at this practically in our application will now find the element having the ID Y2. So I'm opening up Chrome and inspecting this. I'm sorry, I'm giving the XPath for the particular element. So double forward slash div having the ID is equal to Y2. And as you can see, the element is present right here and it is exactly same such so that Y1, Y2 and Y3, they all are children of the parent B2. Exactly same right here, Y1, Y2, Y3 and the parent is B2. We will now write our access, which is uh, you first give a forward slash followed by the name of the access, which is parent P A R E N T. And then you give a colon and one more colon. And then you give the tag of your parent. The tag of a parent here is div, right? So you give div D I V. And as you can see, the parent is highlighted right here. Now you can either give div or you can give a star. Star basically means any tag and in this case it would not matter because uh, your parent would be only one. Okay. Now this is exactly same as uh, tutorial number one in which we are done uh, the forward slash followed by your double dot and that will point to the parent as well. So guys uh, most of the time we do not use the access parent but we will be using your double dots because that is much more convenient and much more easy. So that is done with your parent access. We will now look at your ancestor access. So as you see guys, unlike your parent where your scope was limited only to one particular element by using ancestor, the scope is now extended to a whole range of elements, which is basically your parent, your parents, parent and their parent and all the way to your very top. In our case, this is going to be your HTML tag itself. So why is this helpful? So let us look at a practical example here. Let me go to Chrome and this time instead of typing parent, let me now type your ancestor. So A N C S T O R. And as you can see here, it has got total of 24 elements right here. Now, 
let us take for example that I wanted to identify this particular element here call as div with the ID call as A. If you look at our Excel, sorry, if you look at our PowerPoint presentation, I mean this element right here. I want to uniquely identify this. Okay, let us come back to Chrome. Let me copy this for now and save it. So if I just do double forward slash uh, div having the ID is equal to the ID A, you will see that I've got total of two elements found, which is these two ones right here. So they are not unique, right? Now a good way to find if something is unique is that you can just say that I would like to find the ID of an element which is A but it is also the ancestor of the element Y2. Okay, so I want to find the ancestor of the element Y2 who also has the ID equal to A. And by this particular approach, you will not be getting two elements but you will be getting just one element. So what we'll do here is we'll go back to our previous code. Here we go. So div. Okay. We are finding the element y2. We are finding out all of his ancestors. But this time we do not want all of the ancestors. So let us remove the star. We want a specific ancestor which has got the tag called div. And it has got the id which is equal to the letter a. And right now if you see that it doesn't give me two elements but it just provides me one element which is unique which is this one right here because this element is not an ancestor of our where it is of a particular element called as y2 so y2's ancestor is this one right here div with the id a and not the other one so this is a practical example where you might be using your ancestor tag let us come back over here so now we're done with ancestor let us look at ancestor or self this basically just means that your range is now including the element itself. So here y2 is not included, but in this case y2 will also be included. The next one is child. So guys, I don't think I need to explain what a child is. So if b2 is an element, then y1, y2 and y3 are the three children of your b2 element. So if I go back to my application and I give instead of y2, if I give you a b2, and it's of ancestor if I type here see a child the child followed by a colon and one more colon and then a star you would see that it has got three children which is y1 y2 and y3 which is exactly as you can see right here now usually you would never you would never specify children in, in this particular manner what people usually do is they just give a single forward slash and then they specify a star like this and that works as well okay you can either give a star or you can also specify the exact tag of your element. For example, if it's a div, then you type a div. If you want a specific div using index, you can give your index as 1, index as 2 and your index as 3 as well. So with that done, we'll go to our next axis, which is descendant. Now, this basically means the same thing, but not just your child, but all of their children and their children as well. Now, as you can see here, if I take b2 tag and I give descendant, it will basically show me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 elements underneath it. So let me go back to my application and I'll do forward slash and I'll type descendant d e c e n d a n t a colon and a colon and then I'll give a star. Okay, I think I made a spelling mistake. D e c e n d a n t. Here we go. And right now you can see it has got eight elements. I think I counted it wrong. So these are all of my eight elements, which are the descendant of the tag B2. Now again, people would not usually type it in this particular manner. Uh, the easier way would be just to type a double forward slash. So a double forward slash and a star would work as well. Now again, you can either give a star or you can give a specific element stack, for example, div having the ID is equal to let's say M2 that would be more precise you can either type in there or you can type it by using your descendant tag and instead of star you type in descendant having a div with the ID is equal to M2 and that will work as well but usually I would not go with this particular 
text path access and simply just go with your double forward slash cause that is much more simpler. Here we go. So now we are done with descendant. We'll now look at what do you mean by following. And this is the most common questions that are asked in interviews. So this might be a bit complicated. So guys, to understand what do you mean by following, you need to draw an imaginary line that goes through all of your ancestors. So what do I mean by this? Let us look at a different diagram, which is this one right here. So if you're working on the element B2, B2's parent is A and A's parent is body and body's parent is X. So if you draw an imaginary line that goes through all of these elements, all the elements that come to the left hand side of this particular imaginary line will be excluded and all the elements that come to the right of this line will be included. Now this makes things a bit complicated. Let us look at a real life example to understand this. We will try to find the following elements of the element B2. So open up the application. So here we have got identified the element called as B2. We will now do a forward slash followed by sibling. So one thing to note is B2 is this element right here. Okay. Now if I talked about um, following, it means all the elements that come underneath it. So B3, all the elements inside B3, B4, all the elements inside B4, followed by BR, this BR, scripts, everything inside your scripts. Basically all the elements that come after B2 is your following. Okay. Now let us look at this practically. So a forward slash followed by following F O L L O W I N G and then your colon and your colon again. And let me just type star so that we get to see all of the elements like this. So here we go. We have got total of 236 elements. Let us just go through a few of them. Here we go B3, the elements inside B3. Here we got B4 and then your BR, BR, your scripts, you got your div and so on so forth. Basically it is going through all the elements which is below the particular element called as B2. So in this way, this is very helpful in case you know you are very sure that a particular element has got common properties which are to your left and to your right and you know exactly where it comes. Let us now look at the next example which is very similar which is your following sibling. So this is similar to your previous example but this is specific to only one level which is your sibling level. So what do I mean by siblings? So if you look at this diagram, you will see that the element A here has got four children, which is B1, B2, B3 and B4. So if you're looking at the element B2 and you're talking about following siblings, you're looking at only that particular hierarchy only and following means towards your right hand side. So you've got two elements B2 and B3. Let us see this exact same thing in our application. Here we go. So if you're looking at B2, you're only concerned about the elements at the same level and the elements that come after it, which is B3 and B4. The elements which are inside this will not be counted. So following then a hyphen followed by sibling S-I-B-L-I-N-G. And as you can see, there are two elements found, which is B3 and B4. So guys, your next two XPath accesses are pretty much similar. Your next one is preceding, which is the exact opposite of following. And then you have your preceding sibling, which is again the exact opposite of your following sibling. We'll not go into that right now. We'll now look at uh, how can we implement these XPath accesses in your actual day-to-day -day automation activities. So let us look at a real life example where maybe it will be helpful. So let me open up the same example. And let me scroll about to something which I usually observe is uh, in your applications you might have text boxes like this. You have a label and then you have a text box, right? So let me spy on this. And as you can see here that you have a label here and right underneath the label you have a div and inside of the div you have an input. And this pretty much, uh, this pretty much stays consistent over all of the other elements as well. So what usually you would do is to identify the particular text box. You have to spy on it each and every time and that is a waste of time. So instead what we'll do here is we are going to identify the text box by using the label. Okay. 
and that can be done by using following siblings as you have given right here. So step number one is identifying the element this particular label by using the text right. So the element here is a label. So let me copy the label and change the div to label. I'll then copy the text over here and change b2 to, to name and I do not want id but I want to verify the text. So text is equal to name and as you can see here it automatically points out to the div tag. Now I do not want a star I would say it's a div and inside the div I have an input. Here we go and now you see that by giving the label value of name it is now pointing to the text box of that particular name value. Now it is pretty much simple even if somebody does not know how to create x parts he, he or she simply has to copy the label name paste it in your x path and there you go the element is automatically found same way for any other uh, any other element which might be present in your web page so creating x paths like this will really save your time and that can easily be done by using a following sibling preceding sibling there are many examples which we have just seen So guys, this is it. This marks the end of our four step program in learning x -Pass from your basic to your very advanced level. And I think I've covered almost each and every minute topic there is to cover in x -Pass. Now that said, going forward in the next tutorials, I will be compiling a list of those hard to get x -Pass elements and I will be showing you how to get the x -Pass for those elements as well. So in the meantime, if you'll have any such elements which are difficult to find, such issues you can comment below and maybe I will include that in the tutorials as well. Now that said if you have any questions in this entire four, uh, four lecture series you can comment below I will help you out. If you like this entire series on XPath do show your support by liking and sharing this video and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for watching and thank you for your patience.